Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Chances are a local man never saw it coming. He says he was carjacked by what sounds like a whole family. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Plus, looking at the future of tech in the Alamo City, workforce development, and the importance of Space Force. We'll be live with the president and CEO of Port San Antonio in today's leading essay segment. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, I promise our cameras do work. It is just that gray outside, 56 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, December 13th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Yesterday, the sun was out. It was gorgeous outside. This morning, a different start. It was, it's funny because you said gray, but for a second I thought, oh, it looks gray outside. <laughs> I was like, ooh, Max getting with the cray cray no, jargon. No, I'm, I'm not that trendy, but Sarah Spivey is. Cray as in cray cray, like crazy, is that yeah. what you're talking about? I think yeah. that's where she went with yeah. it. Yeah. The weather will be cray today. Yeah. We have we to are. wait for a front to arrive in the afternoon. Right now, though, it is gray outside. We do have areas of fog, as you can see, and even some areas of light rain. It's 56 degrees outside at the airport. A little little bit of light rain being picked up at the airport as of about 10 minutes ago or so ago. Uh, visibility is down to a quarter of a mile, so we do have some dense fog in the area. Please be advised that if you have to get out early this morning, just know that you might have to use those low beams because of the, the dense fog in some places. The heaviest rain right now is along the central uh, coastal plain, rather, uh, just toward Victoria, but we are seeing some light rain showers out near Hallettsville as well. Around San Antonio, some very passing light rain showers on the western edge of Loop 1604 there on the west side of town, right over Medina Lake. We do have some passing light rain showers, some passing light rain showers up into parts of Kamau County as well uh, near Canyon Lake. So you may run into a couple of very quick passing light rain showers, but you'll definitely run into some areas of fog this morning. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Kerrville, down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels, and here in San Antonio, down to a quarter of a mile in Fredericksburg, all but zero up in Rock Springs. And today, as we said, is going to be a very busy weather day. We do have some morning light rain out there, but right around midday, we will get a cold front. Then it'll be very sunny and it will be very, very windy. Winds could gust up to 40 miles per hour today, so there is a lot Lot to talk about in a jam packed forecast. All of the forecast for you coming up in a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Not quite the meetup a man had in mind. He told San Antonio police he was carjacked by a woman with a gun in a parking lot in a park just northwest of downtown. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters with that story. Good morning, Katrina. We understand the woman was not alone. Well, good morning. That's right. That man told the uh, police that the woman who had a gun also had five children with her. That He says those were the carjacking suspects. Now, let me give you a look at the video. That man says that he had gone to Martinez Creek Trail around 1130 last night, expecting to meet up with a woman. But based on what he told police, he got more than he expected. He says the woman who approached him with five children in tow pulled out a gun and demanded the keys to his SUV. He says she then loaded all of those kids into his silver Nissan Rogue and drove off, heading toward Interstate 10. The police searched the area using their helicopter, but they did not find that SUV or the woman or the five children. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, one man dead after a shooting on the northeast side. San Antonio police tell us this is all around 3.30 a.m. That man who was found shot, he was inside his own vehicle. It was stopped in the middle of Judson Road near George Cooper Street. Police tell us the car was full of bullet holes and the man inside had been shot. Paramedics did arrive to the scene, but it was too late. That man was dead. Investigators still working to figure out who the victim is, trying to figure out why he was shot and who was responsible. And firefighters were busy overnight after an electrical spark sent a home up in flames. Crews say when they arrived at the home in the 1100 block of South San Marcos around 1230 in the morning, they saw a lot of smoke coming from inside the home. Fortunately, they were able to quickly contain the fire inside. Damages to the home were estimated at $10,000. Arson was not called the scene because San Antonio Fire Department says the cause was electrical. The latest news this morning, community rallying around together in the same spot where 16-year-old Athen Graff was shot and killed earlier this month, the community remembering the short life he lived. 
His mother said her son had hoped to attend UTSA, later work in the mental health field. She said that he had a special way of connecting to people and loved life so much. The Medina County Sheriff's Office did make an arrest. They arrested and charged 18-year-old David Garcia Jr. with Athens murder. No motive has been released yet, but investigators do believe that the two teenagers did know each other. The God Sees Your Tears ministry held their third annual homicide awareness event that honors those who have been killed over the past years. Last night's theme was Light of Hope, Day of Remembrance. Founder of the ministry, Teresa Salazar, saw, lost her son to gun violence four years ago. She says holding this event and running her ministry opens painful wounds, but it helps coping with other families impacted by homicide. She says her biggest mission is to show those responsible for taking the lives of their loved ones that they will not become a victim to the hatred. For what? For what? What are you getting out of it? You're taking a life and you're always you're also taking a life of families because the day that that young man decided to take the life of my son, he took my life. He took the life of my other children. Salazar says their ministry has grown so much they are creating a documentary. She said after several requests, they will hold the next national homicide awareness event in Chicago, Illinois. Now to the pandemic here at home. COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County continuing to rise this weekend. In just the last 24 hours, almost 1,000 new cases reported. That brings us to a total of 93,476 total COVID-19 cases. 1,418 people have died here in Bear County. Now that is an increase of 992 new cases as of just yesterday. Meanwhile, 697 people are in our local hospitals, 238 in the ICU, 125 on ventilators. When it comes to the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for our county, here's what we know so far. There is no specific date set for vaccines to be administered, but according to the San Antonio Fire Department Public Information Officer Joe Arrington, fire crews have been told to begin filling out forms needed to get those shots. In addition to compel uh, completing those forms, firefighters have also been instructed to be ready to get the vaccine at any time. We have any and all updates on the vaccine, both on air and online at ksat.com. Texas health officials also reporting a small increase in hospitalizations from COVID-19 across the Lone Star State. The health department reporting a rise in hospitalizations from 9,109 to 9,192 patients, 13,254 new cases, 235 people died from the virus yesterday alone. The seven day rolling average of new cases in the state, this is across Texas, rose to 11,295 every day. Well, back here at home, San Antonio continues to grow. We continue to bring in new businesses and help local startups. And a big part of this new growth is Port San Antonio. Joining us in today's Leading SA segment is Jim Pershbach, President and CEO of Port San Antonio. Good morning. Morning. How y'all doing today? Doing well. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Now, we know a lot about Port San Antonio. We've done a few stories with you guys. But how would you explain what's going on at the port right now in terms of the technology aspect? What we're doing is working with companies that are applying technologies into the existing uh, industries that we have, the existing consumer technologies that we have. So it's really about platform integration and convergence. Well, the motto for the port is home for innovation, and you continue to bring in new companies from all over the world. So why are these businesses attracted to the Alamo City? Well, we've got two things. We've got a lot of people with tremendous talent, some institutions and organizations or universities that are doing amazing things. But we also have the ability to take those technologies and put them to work. Whether it's putting them to work in energy, whether it's putting them to work in manufacturing, we're doing some amazing things here in San Antonio. Now, the port is so much more than just a campus. It's a place for business, but also education. Can you talk to us about the school, SAMSAT, and also the workforce development programs you have in place? Sure. The, the most important thing is we move into a world that's going to be much more uh, technological. We need to make sure that education becomes a lifelong process. And with the Compass Rose Academy, which we've been very excited about, the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology and the programs there, it's all about connecting people with both educational opportunities and those educational opportunities connecting them to jobs. Now, how do you think the port is going to help shape the future economic impact of San Antonio? 
it's going to become, and, and I know it's the next segment, but it's going to be how we master the space domain. And space is not about going up there in jumpsuits. Space is about capturing energy and beaming it wirelessly down to Earth. It's about finding more resources available here on the planet. It's about finding resources that are available on the moon or elsewhere. And what San Antonio is doing, and you see some of those robots working right now, is finding ways for us to be able to access those new resources. And it's new resources that generate new opportunities for people. Well, Mr. Pershbach, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we'll see you again in our 8.30 half hour. And we'll ask you more about this really exciting Space Force program. Thank you. Thanks so much. Look forward to it. All right, see you then. Time now is 8.10, 56 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a real-life toy story, what some <laughs> Home Depot employees did while looking for Sheriff Woody's rightful owner. You a Toy Story fan? Yes. Uh, I'm more of a Buzz guy, but I get it. Oh, no, I was Woody girl. Plus, getting your gift shipped before it is too late when USPS says you need to mail the gifts to make sure that they arrive by Christmas Day. And getting cozy at home while watching the family holiday classic when and where you can watch Charlie Brown a Charlie Brown Christmas for free. And before we head to break, let's see, can we get anything out there? Uh, uh, it's still pretty gray out there. Pretty or cray. Pretty cray, yeah. <laughs> pretty gray. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey, see how cray the rest of the day is gonna be. Cray cray. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Ansira Nissan. Hi, this is Anthony Corey with Ansira Nissan. My wife and I would like to thank our son for his service and wish him a happy holidays. How many days are we away from Christmas? Hmm. What, what's today, the 13th? Can you do the math? 12 days. Yeah, 12 days, there you go. 12 days of Christmas, It also thank showed you. it on the calendar. <laughs> Sarah Spivey. Right behind us. <laughs> well, we're getting so close to Christmas, now it's a perfect time to watch those holiday classics with the family. And one film that guarantees to get you and the kids in the spirit, it is the one and only A Charlie Brown Christmas. You can actually watch it for free a few different ways this evening. The first and probably easiest option is on PBS. Keep in mind, it will not be on the PBS app. You can also watch it on the PBS Kid channel. If you're an Apple's TV subscriber, you can stream the movie ad-free in HD. For more information, just head over to our website, ksat.com. All right, so guys, aside from Charlie Brown Christmas, what is your favorite Christmas movie? I don't know. I I just watched the making of the the Netflix that does the making yeah. of the Christmas. Oh, yeah. So I did. I watch. I think Elf. I was gonna say Ooh, Elf. That just one. really made me want to watch it like over and over. I remember seeing it in theaters, and I thought, okay, well, this one's gonna be a classic. It definitely is. Uh, now. It doesn't necessarily feel very wintry outside right now. It really is just pretty gray. What is that? That's fog. <laughs> That's fog right there, okay, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, visibility is down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, and even some areas of light rain are being reported, mainly sprinkles right now around San Antonio. But there are some heavier uh, rain showers and even some thunderstorms closer to the coastal plain. Victoria got a thunderstorm this morning. Hallettsville seeing some light rain as well. A little bit closer to San Antonio, we do have those very small passing quick light streamer showers moving from south to north on the west side of the county and in the northwest side of the county just near Holotus we've got one little shower there one little light sprinkle out near Medina Lake as well and then we have some more rain developing along a cold front up near Junction and so we're going to continue to see light rain chances in the forecast through about lunch until then, though, it is going to be gray and we are going to have to deal with fog. Visibility, like I said, is down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, down to a little bit more than half a mile at JBSA Randolph, down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels, pretty much down to zero up on that Kendall County, Bear County line right near Bernie Stage Airfield and down to a quarter of a mile in Kerrville as well. And temperatures are on the mild side. While it is cool with temperatures in the low to mid 50s, uh, this is pretty warm for a December. December start of the day. Uh, again, 54 in Bernie Stage, 56 Bulverde, 56 San, San Antonio International Airport, 56 in New Braunfels. A wider view here, you can see just how cold it is behind that front. Temperatures in the single digits and teens along the uh, Rockies there. This front is going to move through San Antonio at about lunch. So 
from noon till about 1 to 2 p.m. We'll have that front move through. Look at all the snow around this area of low pressure for Oklahoma and the panhandle of Texas. Very impressive there. But in our future cast again, we're going to have the chance for light rain through noon. That's when that front is going to move through. And then look at that. Boom. We're going to see skies clear almost instantly, and it is going to get very windy very quickly. In fact, we could see wind gusts of up to 40 to 40 miles, five miles per hour from the west northwest today. That'll blow your socks off for sure, and it'll definitely toss around any lightweight patio furniture, lightweight outdoor Christmas decorations. So maybe leave those inflatables, those Christmas inflatables. Uh, Keep them deflated tonight or else we'll be fetching them down the road. OK, just a reminder that there is a red flag warning in effect for our counties west of San Antonio. Red flag warning means very high fire danger. You're going to have windy conditions. You're going to have gusts up to 45 miles per hour in low humidity. Any little spark will set a fire and the fires will spread quickly. Grass fires will spread quickly given these conditions. So please avoid outdoor burnings. Make sure to extinguish cigarettes fully. Don't just flick them outside. Make sure to dispose of them properly. OK, so just in summary today, gray to start 30% light rain will be in the 50s through 10 uh, around noon. That's when we'll start to see skies clear. We'll get up to 68 degrees today, but it's just going to be very windy in the afternoon and totally sunny as well. Then quickly tonight, it'll turn cold and gusty. Temperatures will be down into the upper 30s by midnight with a stout wind. So we're talking a wind chill again, gusts up to about 40 miles per hour tonight. It's going to be a gusty night, but clear. And tonight we're going to see the Geminid meteor shower peak. So make sure to get away from lights. Look to the darkest player to the sky. Allow for 20 minutes for your eyes to adjust to see the meteors. And you could just see two meteors a minute maximum. Again, it peaks tonight. Now looking ahead to the week, we're going to be cold every morning. Temperatures in the 30s and cool in the afternoons with highs only in the 50s. Sarah, you, the sun sets around 530. Uh -huh. So what time do you think is best as like six or well like well seven. after sunset so anytime probably after 7 30 you'll be good to go just get out of the city go west you strategizing well, i had a viewer just email me they said medina lake mm. is a good location yeah thank you i really appreciate that there you go all right time now 8 20 56 degrees out well after the break this little <laughs> toy woody of course was reunited with his owner a little boy and but not before he actually went on some adventures. We'll explain next. Before we head to break, take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, six, five, six, fireball one, daily four, four, zero, six, five, fireball zero. Cash five, three, nine, 15, 16, 23. Texas lotto, four, 31, 36, 50, 52, 54. And Powerball, 17, 54, 56, 63, 69. Powerball 20, power play 2, win big. So check this story out. A little boy's lost doll finds its way home. I refuse to call this a doll. It's a Woody toy from Toy Story. So before he actually went home, he became a temporary Home Depot employee. Check it out. So there he is. Oh, look at that. So it all happened when employees found, paint. <laughs> found the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> that have been left behind at the store in New Hampshire. They posted on social media asking locals to get the word out, then had some fun adding images of him with a Home Depot outfit on. In a signature Home Depot a apron, putting in some work around the store, about a week later, Woody was reunited with his owner. He's in the <laughs> bathtub, he's <laughs> mixing paint. Oh, my, my nephews love Buzz and Woody. This story makes me so happy. See, I'm a big Buzz person. Um, see, of course, I'm Woody. All right, and the iconic FAO Schwartz is offering up a night of wonder by listing its Manhattan toy store on Airbnb. Oh my gosh, it's like real life big. One lucky family of four from New York City can spend a night there on December 21st. They'll have free reign of the two-story, 20,000-square-foot wonderland. It also includes a shopping spree, a feast, and a music lesson Aww. on that famous giant floor piano. Yep, just like the one, like I said, in the yep. movie Big. The priceless experience is very reasonable. It's only $25 mm. for the night. Okay. An online lottery for the stay on Airbnb's website will help determine the lucky winning family. I am going to apply. There you go. All right. 826, 56 degrees out. 
Still ahead, the president and CEO of Port SA will be joining us live to talk about the future of San Antonio and if Space Force can be a part of it. Plus, the latest when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine, when states can expect to receive the first shipments. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, December 13th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. You know, yesterday was so nice. I took the dogs perfect. on like a long walk. Oh, yeah. But Sarah, you said it's going to be windy today. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's gray outside right now, but the second part of the day is going to be sunny and windy. By the end of the day, you won't really remember how it started here. Gray and kind of uh, gloomy, you'll remember how windy it got. Uh, in fact, we could see gusts up to 40 miles per hour today. But right now outside, the story is gray skies, some areas of very light passing rain showers, sprinkles, honestly, and visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in San Antonio. It's even worse up I-10 toward the Hill Country, Kerrville, Bernie Stage Airfield visibility down to less than quarter of a mile, practically zero visibility down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels. So we do have areas of dense fog, a little bit of improvement out toward Hondo and Castroville, but still visibility less than two miles in many places. And like I said, we do have areas of very light passing rain showers. Uh, let's focus in on this area right up in Bandera, Medina County, a light rain shower over Medina Lake as well. And on the western part of uh, Bear County, just inside Loop 1604 and 410, just to the north of Leon Valley, a passing rain shower there. Uh, there's a more definitive line of light rain out near Junction, uh, and that's because of a cold front that's actually going to move through today, and that's why it's going to be windy. So we'll continue to have a change for rain showers through about noon. That's when that front's going to move through. Then it's going to become sunny very quickly. A high temperature only near 68, but you'll really feel the cold air tonight when it'll continue to be windy with temperatures dropping down into the 30s by midnight and wind gusts up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. So as you can see, today's weather Man, it's going to have everything. And so we've got a very busy forecast coming up for you in just a few minutes, as well as a look ahead to this upcoming week. It'll be pretty cool. Thank you, Sarah. Well, San Antonio police are looking for what sounds like some unlikely suspects in a carjacking. A man told police that a woman with her five children stole his vehicle. So all this happened just northwest of downtown. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters, where police are now investigating. Now, Katrina, earlier you mentioned that the man was expecting to meet up with someone. Yeah, police say that's what he told them, that he had gone to a trail to meet up with a woman not exactly expecting that a woman would steal his SUV. He called police around 1130 last night, telling them that this happened near Cincinnati and North Navidad streets. The man says he went to the Martinez Creek Trail to meet up with a woman. Again, a woman did walk up with five children and a gun, according to the victim. He says she demanded the keys to his silver Nissan Rogue, loaded the children into it and then drove off. Police searched that area in their helicopter, but did not find the SUV. The victim says the last time he saw it, it was headed toward Interstate 10. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. In your latest news this morning, the United States Navy has ended the search for a sailor and San Antonio native who is believed to have fallen overboard this week. Navy officials say they searched more than 607 square nautical miles for more than 55 hours. This search all taking place off the coast of Southern California. They were looking for 20-year-old Ethan Goolsby. Now, the Navy says a search started Thursday morning after a lookout spotted what appeared to be a person in the water. Three helicopters and a boat were launched in response. One sailor unaccounted for during a command-wide muster. In your morning headlines, popular Netflix Cheer star Jerry Harris has been indicted on a new child pornography and sex charge. Authorities say 21-year-old, the 21-year-old is accused of asking a 13-year-old to send him explicit photos of himself and traveled from Texas to Florida with the intent to have sex with a 15-year-old in May of 2019. In September, Harris's attorney denied the allegations against his client and said the accusations occurred when he was a teenager. Now to the latest in the pandemic, what could be the beginning of an end of this pandemic. Now, 
The vaccine for widespread use in the United States, this is getting ready to roll out of a Michigan manufacturing plant. Throughout the morning, we have seen trucks line up and fill up. Now, the shipments this morning will set in motion the biggest vaccination effort in the United States history. The shots that are critical to stopping the nation's coronavirus spread, they are destined to reach states beginning tomorrow. Well, Port San Antonio has over 80 tenant customers who employ more than 14,000 people, and together, they generate more than $5 billion in annual economic activity right here in our region. Joining us once again is Jim Pershbach, president and CEO of Port San Antonio. Good morning, Mr. Pershbach. Morning, how y'all doing? Doing well, thank you so much for joining us again. So Space Force, we hear a lot about of it. And San Antonio is one of the final cities on the possible list. So if the Alamo City is selected for Space Command, what could that mean for our area? Well, first of all, we've really already won. Being one of six cities in the country being considered for Space Command, which is the headquarters for all the services and their space functions, is just a tremendous recognition of what we do here. But as Janice Saucedo Herrera and our friends at EDF will tell you, headquarters is just so important because wherever that command and control goes, we'll have an outsized say in the expenditures, the research, and the investment made there. Now, we have seen people ridicule the idea of Space Force. I mean, there's even a show on Netflix about it. But you have said it is a new necessary element of the future. Why is it so important? Well, it's important because there are a lot of good things that we rely on in space for right here on Earth. communications. We're going to move a lot of our power systems. A lot of our technology is going to be running through satellites up in space. And if you can control those satellites, a lot of good happens. But if somebody gets in there and does something wrong, a lot of bad can happen. So being able to protect our investment in the satellite constellations is going to be important, not just for our national security, but for making sure that way of life here on Earth stays safe and secure. Finally, I mean, this is the big question when it comes to our local economy in Space Force. Are there any Port SA companies that could be making a mark in space? Well, there sure are, and there are a lot of them, Max, that you've already talked to that are doing some amazing things with robots. Everything from Reckon Point and their ability to send a robot up there and measure within two centimeters of accuracy to plus one. You see night aerospace and the medical modules that they're making. Zyrec and their 72 foot tall laser equipped robot. There are some tremendous things going on right here in San Antonio. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Pershbach, for your time and you enjoy your Sunday, uh, your rest of the Sunday. And of course, you can catch this full interview after the show on KSAT.com. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our KSAC community partners are highlighting a magical drive through experience this holiday season without having to leave your car. You and your family can enjoy an illuminated journey to the North Pole with a mile long light display that surrounds the AT&T Center. The event runs through January 3rd with gates opening at 6 p.m. daily. Half of the proceeds are donated to Spurs Give, the Spurs Sports and Entertainment's nonprofit partner. To find out ticket prices and times available, just head over to our website at ksat.com. Just for the record, it's at the AT&T Center, not at the North Pole. Yeah, but it's the North Pole. Yeah. All right, 838, 56 degrees out. And speaking of Spurs, Spurs give, great nonprofit, but also great basketball team. The Silver and Black are back. We're going to give you an inside look, check out the highlights from the first preseason game, and give you a new look at the new rookie. Plus, making sure your holiday gifts get delivered on time, the recommendation from the USPS and several retailers. Before we head to break, one last look at the Alamo City, or at what least what we can that? see of it. It's fog. There we go. <laughs> we needed that meteorological expert. That's fog. Yeah. So is the rest of the day going to be great? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Have we got deals for you? KSAT Deals is here to save you money right now. Welcome to KSAT Deals at KSATDeals.com. We have a long list of bargains for you, but we only have time for two today, one for the bedroom and one for the gadget savvy shopper. Let's start in the bedroom. The Bamboo Comfort six piece luxury sheet set is very breathable. The microfiber and bamboo help to reduce allergens. Now the retail price $109, but the case at deals price $32.99. That's a 70% discount. Moving on to the smartwatch. 
This tracks everything from calories burned to your sleeping and blood oxygen levels. It works both with iOS and Android. Now the retail price, $199. Case that deal, $44.99. That's a 77% discount. Now you can get these two along with several others only on KSATDeals.com. green light, a glimmer of hope. A vaccine is on the way. Where will it go first? How will you get your shot today? The head of the FDA, his plan to vaccinate the country, and is relief on the way. Our powerhouse team breaks it all down on ABC's This Week. In your morning consumer news, the U.S. Postal Services and several retailers urge you to place your orders soon or as soon as possible if you want those gifts to arrive in time for the holidays. USA Today reports the Postal Service is flush with packages and short on employees available to process them due to the pandemic. It says to place your ground orders by Tuesday if you're sending Christmas gifts with UPS, FedEx or USPS. Retailers like JCPenney, Lowe's, Kohl's and Bath and Body Works also say you should shop soon to avoid expedited shipping fees. All right, if you keep up with the Kardashians, the Kardashian family sealed a new deal with the streaming service Hulu. The multi-year contract will be available on Star. The project is expected to debut sometime in 2021. The deal comes a few months after the family announced the end of their long-running reality show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians on cable news channel E. And the iconic FAO Schwartz is offering up a night of wonder by listing its Manhattan toy store on Airbnb. This looks so cool. One lucky family of four from New York City can spend a night there on December 21st for only $25. They'll have free reign of, two st of the two-story 20,000 square foot wonderland, just like you can see in big. It also includes a shopping spree, a feast, and a music lesson mm. on that giant piano. An online lottery for this stay on Airbnb's website will help determine the winner. All right, Sarah has your entertainment news. Now it is time to talk sports, and it is never a bad day to talk basketball. Yes, the Silver and Black are back. Spurs tipping off their preseason here in San Antonio, taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder, a new-look Oklahoma City Thunder. No fans in the stand, but there was competition. First quarter, you just saw DeMar feed Jacopoto. Floater, the Spurs' first season preseason points. Trey Lyles driving, throw it off high off the glass. Very tough shot. Spurs will leave 14-11. Rookie and first-round pick. Here he goes. Bang! Devin Vassell creating his own shot, 16-footer, and it is good. Trails do, uh, Spurs do trail, 29-24, 33-32 after one second quarter. Spurs playing from behind. Rudy Gay from three. They're down 56-47. Cue up Rudy for another triple. He looks good. Had a good bubble season, too. Plus, another triple. And OKC up 10. They lead 73-58 at half. Let's take it to the third quarter. There we go. Spurs behind 81-61, but... There he is, the rookie again from three. And eight minutes ago, Rudy Gay stealing the ball, taking it back, a little Euro step. Not bad, not bad, laying it in. Another look from a lower angle. OKC up 15, but let's take another look at the rookie. From three again, Spurs still down 85-77. 98-90 after a three, and in the final quarter, Jacopoto, Patty Mills showing off. Actually, fun fact, he was late to the media part because he was getting a lift in. Eh, he had a good game, but still. After trailing by 20, the Thunder hold on 121 to 108. Patty led the Spurs 24 points. A rookie had 12, but it's preseason, so win-loss doesn't really affect the playoff chances. Good to see the guys back in action. Real contributor in a rookie. All right, it is Pro Sunday, so coming. naturally we get to talk about David football. Lawford. Two big games today. We got Cowboys and we have Bengals. We'll take it on the Bengals at 12. They're still somehow in the playoff hunt. And next up, we have Texans taking on the Bears. That game also at noon. Both games will be away. There, there we go. Look at us. We're throwing out the triple box. I like GMSA this. Weekends. I feel so far away from you guys. Hi, friends. Hi. Not me. This is like a Brady Bunch thing here. I so know. it's pretty cool. Uh, we are going to have a wild weather day. It is going to go from cloudy and gray and even a little damp in some areas to completely sunny and windy with fire danger. Yeah, you heard that right. So there's a lot to talk about in the forecast outside right now. This is the view we've got. 
56 degrees with some areas of sprinkles and visibility down to a quarter of a mile. So dense fog is out there right now. Some thunderstorms going on near the Houston area and some light rain out near Hallettsville and Gonzales as well. Uh, here in San Antonio, we're really only dealing with these streamer showers, these passing light rain showers, some areas of sprinkles. You can see that's the case out near Medina Lake right now near Bandera and then up to the north right near Junction. We do have another line, a really highly defined line of showers. This is along that cold front that's going to flip our weather pattern. But for now, the biggest hazard out there uh, is the fog. Visibility is down to practically zero up across parts of I-10 toward the hill country. So Bernie Stage Airfield, Kerrville visibility nearly at zero. It's down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, down to a quarter of a mile at JBSA Randolph and down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels. Visibility down three quarters of a mile out near Hondo, down to three miles in Del Rio. So again, it's kind of this core area of uh, Guadalupe, Camal, Bear County, up toward Kerr County in the Hill Country that's dealing with the really dense fog right now. Temperatures pretty mild. For this time of the day, we usually wake up in the upper 30s and low 40s this time of year, but we're in the 50s. Those temperatures are right smack dab near the dew points, and that's why we're seeing fog develop. Corpus Christi starting off at 72 this morning, but a wider view here, and you can very clearly see the cold core of air across the Rockies that's just spilling uh, across parts of the central plains. There's our cold front right now. This cold front is going to clear skies and it's going to make things very, very windy. Satellite and radar, you can see very clearly all the snowfall across parts of Oklahoma and the panhandle of Texas around that area of low pressure. And again, taking you through the future cast, we will have a chance for light rain through noon here in San Antonio. That's when that front is going to move through and then skies are going to pretty much clear instantly and it will be sunny and it will be very, very windy. Wind gusts of up to 45 miles per hour in some places. If you have lightweight patio furniture, that's gonna be across the street. If you have Christmas decorations that are pretty lightweight or those inflatables, don't inflate those inflatables tonight because these wind gusts are gonna last through uh, the overnight hours. And in fact, during the day today from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., there is a red flag warning for counties west of San Antonio in this hot pink color Color because fire danger is going to be a big hazard. Any little fire that gets, gets started is going to spread very rapidly, so please avoid outdoor burning. Here's the day for you. Again, we're going to see skies clear very quickly around noon, 68 for the high, and then it'll get cold tonight. Windy, too. Temperatures are going to be in the 30s, probably close to midnight. And again, we could see gusts up to about 45, 40 miles per hour today. Uh, by tomorrow, though, those winds will subside, and the week ahead is actually going to be pretty quiet. We're going to start off cold every day with temperatures in the 30s and it'll still be cool in the afternoons with temperatures in the 50s or near 60 degrees. Max and Sarah. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. 851, 56 degrees out. It can be a recipe for disaster. We're talking about the violence that can erupt at a home as we live under pandemic restrictions and now holiday chaos tomorrow on GMSA. Signs you may not see and ways you can help. And the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police tell us a gathering at a home this morning on South Holmes Street turned very unfriendly. Officers say witnesses told them there was a dispute between two men over a woman. Paramedics found a man down the street with stab wounds to his chest. Now, they believe that he tried to run away after being stabbed. Police did arrest the suspect at the home. They say the man who was stabbed was stable as he was sent to the hospital. Just got the pollen count in. Mold is low at 270. Mountain cedar is present, but it is low. With today's winds, though, mountain cedar may actually go up by tomorrow. Now, visibility is down to about a quarter of a mile in many places, so dense fog and some light rain is possible through uh, about noon. That's when we'll see that front move through. It'll get sunny and it'll get windy. A high temperature near 68, but getting cold tonight and wind gusts are going to be the biggest story today. Gusts up to 40 to 45 miles per hour and then a quiet week ahead. We'll be seeing temperatures in the 30s in the mornings and then cool in the afternoons with sunshine. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest your Sunday. Happy Sunday.